Thank you for an amazing reception. Uh, I will be out in a bit. Before that, you've got an absolute treat. It's absolutely brilliant. Please don't stay to wonderful George Lewis. Give me a cheer if you're excited for Josh Whittacom. Hey. Yes, give me a cheer if you're wondering who the fuck I am. Hey. Bastards. <laughs> I'm George, I'm George, I'm just here for a short while just to make sure you're all you're all comfortable, you're all laughing a bit and then I'll, I'll bring Josh out. And I'm in, a, I'm in a good mood, it was my, my birthday recently. Yeah. Cheers, thank you, not all of you remember, that's fine. Yeah. But what, one of the presents that my wife got me was, she got me a swear box for our flat. Yay. <laughs> and now, every single time I say a swear word, I have to spend the night in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I know you're leaving here tonight, but you're not that George Lewis lad. He said he was married, but he's only ever had one girlfriend, because that's not true. I've had about twice as many. <laughs> In fact, I was on Facebook the other day, and I noticed that my ex-girlfriend is still trying to get my attention by settling down and having kids with another man. <laughs> get over me! <laughs> Jesus. Back off. But yeah, married now, give me a cheer if you're married. It was mainly women, wasn't it? That's, uh... <laughs> Good. <laughs> mainly women and one bloke, yeah. Uh, that man. Did you marry all of them, mate? <laughs> if only he went. Oh, if only. <laughs> Are you married? Yeah? To this lady? She didn't cheer. <laughs> how, how long have you been married? It's been a while. She sounds knackered. <laughs> Is it going well? <laughs> he went so far, she went. <laughs> oh well, that's a good thing to look forward to. Um, <laughs> I, quite, I quite like being married, but this is a little bit embarrassing, but wearing high heels, my wife is about two centimetres taller than me. Uh, she's about six centimetres taller than me if I don't wear them. <laughs> that's a silly joke. That's a, that's a bit of a silly joke, but I joke about my height because I'm not the biggest guy in the world, and I'm quite conscious about it, because her ex was a lot bigger than me. Well, he is a lot bigger than me, he's not dead. <laughs> Wish he was. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but anyway, it's all right, it's all right, because these days I've got a trick uh, to, that I do to make myself appear bigger. So I do a trick with a perspective. What I do is every time I make a cup of tea for everyone, I do mine in a little espresso cup. So sort of plays with a scale, <laughs> and on the front of it, I've written, Sports Direct. <laughs> oh, massive. <laughs> you can do loads of tricks like that with, with scale. Any, anyone here ever has sent a dick pic? No, Blackpool. Very civilized audience, and some liars, I... <laughs> I never have. I don't suppose I ever will. I'm a, I'm a married man, but I was saying to my mate the other day, if I ever did, I'd do a trick with the scale. I'd take a picture of mine next to something. I thought I'd take a picture of mine next to a bonsai tree. <laughs> it would look scary big. <laughs> my mate said to me, oh, George, if I ever get asked to send a dick pic, I'd take a picture of my dick next to your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I said, jokes on you, you look like a paedophile. <laughs> Why did I say that? What? Whoa. <laughs> I don't come off very well in that joke. <laughs> She's a, a teacher, my wife. Got any teachers in? Yay! Shouldn't shout out, you should know that. That's, <laughs> That's not fair. Um, <laughs> But she's, I don't know if you do this, she's always, um, she always correcting me on things. Like if I say, if I say I've just ate loads of chips, she'll say, no, it's eaten, not ate. Or if I say, if I say I've just drunk loads of smoothie, she'll say, no, that's ketchup. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. But she does this thing as well. She gets angry with me about a lot of things. But she woke up recently and she was angry with me because of what I did in her dream. <laughs> Have you had that? Have you had this, my friend, the married man? No, nope, not for the room, is it? <laughs> is it well, it's not fair, because you know, you wake up, I woke up and I said, what, what did I do? And she went, oh, as if you don't know. <laughs> and I said, no, seriously, what did I do? And she said, 
you started getting off with my sister. <laughs> and I went to it, go on. <laughs> I didn't really, I said, oh, that, that, that is mental. And she said, I know you'd, you'd never do that. And I said, no, it's mental, we have the same dream. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And she was pretty angry with me after that. And I knew that I needed to say something to make it better. So I, I sat down with her and I said, listen, I really love you. And yes, I have had two girlfriends in my life. I'm a bit of a player. <laughs> but, but I wish I'd had less. I wish it was just you. Thanks, ma'am. <laughs> and she said, it's not less, it's fewer. <laughs> and I said to her, every time you correct me on my grammar, I love you a little bit fewer. <laughs> I do like being married. Though. Another present, actually, that my wife got me, probably the most memorable present she's ever got me, was she got me a hot oil massage. Now, if you don't know what a hot oil massage is, it's the nice, relaxing feeling of being scalded. <laughs> it's a pan pine music. Um, and she gave me this, and it was just like a little voucher for this place near where we lived. But what she did to make it more of a surprise was she wrapped it up in a bigger box and weighed it down. So I opened up this box and I saw the voucher and she went, surprise! And I went, oh, yay! <laughs> Massage voucher. And she said, did I get you with the bigger box? I said, yeah, you got me. <laughs> with the PlayStation sized box, you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, well then I thought, that I'll go along with an open mind, it might be quite nice. So I went along, it was on the high street, there I live, went in the place, up the stairs and into the room, and it, it was quite nice in there. You almost forgot that you were directly above a fried chicken shop. Um, <clears throat> and the woman welcomed me in, and she was lovely. Her name was Angela, and then she went, right, George, if you just want to take all of your clothes off. So I started laughing, and I thought she was joking, I had to break the ice a little bit. And she didn't laugh, so I just took everything off. Then she laughed. <laughs> and then she told me to get onto this sort of weird looking massage table. And it was quite high and I was feeling a bit awkward because I was naked. But I thought, well, everyone has to do this. So I, I sort of clambered onto it. And I got onto it. And then I was really uncomfortable. And my legs are sort of hanging off the end. And then she went, oh, you're on it upside down. The hole. It's for your face. So I quickly, I was quite relieved, it was quite a big hole. Uh, should have taken my bonsai tree. But anyway, <clears throat> I got the right way up and then she just started covering my back in this, this boiling hot oil. We hadn't even agreed a safe word. She just got stuck in. And I thought this is the most painful thing that's ever happened to me. I need it to end right now. She said, how is it? I said, it was lovely, thank you. It's really <laughs> And then she started really going at my shoulders. And as she was doing it, she was going, Oh, oh, you're very naughty. And I thought she'd take you very naughty. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know what to do. I was like, uh, uh, you're not going to spank me, are you? <laughs> she went, what? <laughs> I said, well, I, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> And then there wasn't much small talk after that. The only other little bit of small talk was when I, I told her it was my, my birthday and I told her how old I was. And she said, oh, you, you look young for your age. Now, usually that is a compliment. I'm not sure it is when you're not wearing any pants. <laughs> <clears throat> but she carried on down, further down, further down. They do your arse as well, which is a bit brilliant. <laughs> it's, really good. it's really good. And she's doing that, she's doing that. And then I'm thinking, surely the arse is, is the last bit, but it wasn't, because then she asked me to turn onto my back so she could do my front, and I'm thinking, this is a bit weird, because I'm naked. Uh, and I was worrying, I was thinking, what happens if there's, you know, movement? <laughs> thinking, I don't want to accidentally become a sex offender. <laughs> I don't become a sex offender at all, <laughs> to be, <laughs> to be clear, Blackpool. Um, but anyway, so I'm, I'm thinking, it's fine, I'll just think about something else. So that's what I'm doing. But then she's doing my legs, and then she's going higher and higher and higher. And I thought, oh God, if she carries on, she's going to touch it. <laughs> and she carried on, and she touched it. <laughs> she touched my kneecap, and I... <laughs> it's too much, but then she's going higher still, and she had a hand on my thigh. And I had this horrible thought, as I was laying there listening to a, a panpipe remix of Two Become One by the Spice Girls. <clears throat> 
thought, when I asked my wife for my birthday if she'd get me a Lancashire cricket top, did she mishear me? Did she think I asked for a wank above a chicken shop? <laughs> Thank you very much. Best birthday ever it was. <laughs> I love being married. Although we had, we had our first couple's trip to Ikea recently. Uh, it's an odd shopping experience, Ikea, isn't it? You go for a wardrobe, but you leave with a drawer divider, a garlic crusher, 2,000 tea lights, divorce, some meatballs. It's just full of couples arguing, isn't it? And I, I couldn't believe it when I walked in. It's a full of couples arguing. But then I realised why. Because you're walking around and you're discussing stuff and things are coming out and you're slowly realising that you and this person that you chosen to share your entire life with, have nothing in common. <laughs> you know? And it's big stuff as well, like it might turn out that um, you don't really like the cushions with the little pom-poms on the corners. Um, and it might turn out that she doesn't really like your family. <laughs> that's, that's the sort of thing that comes out. You're not quite sure about orange for the bedroom, she hates the way you breathe. <laughs> It's a great shot. <laughs> and they've done everywhere as well. They decorate everywhere in there, so it looks like it's a room in your house, so everyone just feels immediately comfortable having a domestic in there. <laughs> we were, we were in, I was in one room on my own, and most of the rooms are done quite nicely, but I was in one, and it was done all like, it was all decorated like quite dark reds and black and stuff. And then a couple walked in, they looked around and went, oh wow, it's just like our bedroom. And then moments later, my wife walked in, and she looked around and went, oh wow. What kind of perverts would decorate like this? <laughs> Let's get you out of here! <laughs> I, should have, I should have known when we walked into Ikea. The first thing I heard when we walked into Ikea was a woman saying to a fella, Well, Roy, if we can't agree on a rug, what the hell have we been doing for the last 15 years? <laughs> I should have turned back, but you can't turn back when you're free because you're on a one-way system and you've got to keep up. You've got to keep up to a certain speed or you'll get swept up by this tide of collapsing marriages. <laughs> There'll often be a bloke as well wandering in the wrong direction with a look on his face like he, he knows he's never going to see his family again. <laughs> and he's alright with that. <laughs> and then the one I go to is probably the one that you go to as well. It's a disorientating place to get lost. You don't want to stray from the path because if you get lost, you get confused because it's full of scouse blokes who are speaking Swedish. That's not what you expect to hear. They're walking around going, Well, oh, should we get the Arholstrop or the Hochenbachen? I'm thinking if he discovers the Hack and Vic and Stacker set, he's gonna cough up a furball. <laughs> I'm getting stressed out thinking, George, just get through this and there's a big old bag of dime bars waiting for the end. <laughs> the only reassuring thing I think in Ikea is it appears that all of the other couples are going through the exact same thing as you. We just about made it to the end with our marriage intact. And I looked back, you can see through to previous sections, and I looked back through what looked like the start, the very start, and I could see a couple through this window, and they just looked broken already, like, he, he didn't know where he was, she looked like she hated him. I said to my wife, I know it's been bad, I know it's been bad, but at least we're not them through that window. She said, that's a mirror. <laughs> Get the hell out of there. <laughs> We've had a baby as well recently. Uh, me and my wife, and it's, it's, it's great. It's, uh, it got me thinking about, about my parents, actually. You know, my mum actually met my dad in a gay bar yeah, 28 years into their marriage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny guy, yeah. He's a good dad, my dad, but he's one of those dads he never likes spending that much money. I remember once the, uh, the little digital clock in my bedroom broke. He didn't want to buy a new one, so he just moved the microwave upstairs, put that on the bedside table. To set the alarm, we just put it on defrost for eight hours. <laughs> Woke up at 7 a.m., ping! <laughs> With a hot ear. <laughs> my mum's a wise lady, my mum. Uh, she always used to say to me, George, never dream. So anyway, uh, like I said, we, we had a baby, and I was, I was delighted about having a baby, but it was quite a shock, and it was the way that I found out. So we were out, me and my wife, and I'd had a couple of drinks, I was a little bit drunk, 
And she sat me down about halfway through the night and she said, um, George. I said, yes. She said, I know we've not been married very long, but how would you feel about somebody else coming along to join us? <laughs> Which I maintain is not clear enough, is it? It sounds like she's suggesting something amazing. <laughs> I mean, it is amazing, but it, amazing. <laughs> So I was like, wow, in my head I'm thinking marriage is amazing, I didn't know this is what happened. Uh, so I said, um, I did not know that this would be something you'd want. She said, George, it's all I've ever wanted. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> and I said, this third person, have you got any names? And she said, yes, actually, yes, um, if it's a boy. I said, whoa, no. <laughs> That's not really what I thought you were suggesting. <laughs> She said, I thought you'd prefer a boy. I said, why did you think that? <laughs> I said, I don't think I want to do this. And she said, well, you've not really got an option. I'm pregnant. I said, you're pregnant as well. <laughs> <laughs> she said, as well as what? I said, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but when I found out, when I found out, I was delighted. I was about to be a, a, a dad. But I don't think, as a dad, I don't think it really hits you. Because the woman has to go through everything, obviously, which isn't fair. But the woman has to go through everything. So for a dad, those nine months, nothing changes. But it really hit me when we went into hospital on the day. So we went in and we walked in and immediately when we walked in, the doctor and the midwife, they just started calling me dad. So I walked in and they were like, oh, here's dad. Come and stand over here, dad, have some water, dad. I'm thinking this is moving too quick. <laughs> now, this morning I was young, free and single. Now I'm the dad to two middle-aged women and an old Indian man. <laughs> me out. And I think as well, because we didn't go to many of the classes in the build-up, maybe that's why I wasn't prepared. We went along to one, and we went along, and we sat down, there were quite a few couples there, and the woman leading it said hello to everyone, and then she went, okay, today we're going to talk about how best to welcome your baby from womb to world. And I thought, wow, I had Miss Fag aside for this. this is... <laughs> Unbelievable. And my wife, she thought it was a bit pretentious as well. And we thought, oh, we, we don't need to go to classes about how to give birth. I think, mean, you know, people have been doing it forever. You don't you need classes. But we thought, we'll come up with a little bit of a plan. Like, um, so we decided that I was, decided that I was definitely going to be there. And that's quite a big decision because the hospital car park is three pounds an hour. <laughs> so I was like, no, I want to do it. I want to be a good dad. Uh, <laughs> And we decided that I'd be there and also that I'd be in the room, but I'd stay up near my wife's head. We were both happy with that. That's what she wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. But in the build-up, everyone kept saying, you don't know how you're going to react in the moment. It's a special moment. You don't know how you're going to I was like, pretty sure I do. <laughs> but you don't. Because when it comes to it, so we were in there, I think we were in there for like 14 hours or something. And it was just, it was just horrible. I couldn't really do anything. I was trying to help. I couldn't really do anything. My wife's going through absolute hell. I'm just like trying to give her water every now and again and I'm not doing it right. The thing with my wife is she's lovely, but she can get very tetchy when she's giving birth. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but I'm just trying to help wherever I can. I can't do anything. Every now and again I'm just going, push, push, push. The car park's on £36 now. You've got, you've got to push. <laughs> really got to push. <laughs> And then the thing that worked, because eventually it was the moment, it was the moment of the birth, and I could tell it was, because the midwife's face, it, it, just, it just changed. Uh, and obviously she was tired, overworked, and they do this every day, but she still clearly found this the most amazing thing in the world. And she looked up to me, and she smiled, and I, I smiled at her. And then she went, it's time. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then she went, come and have a look. And I surprised myself, because <laughs> it was like the moment that I heard those words, I just went, fuck off. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> and that's how I welcome my baby from womb to world. Uh, oh, Blackpool, you are such a lovely audience. You're in for a fantastic night. So what we're going to do is start the applause and bring Josh onto the stage. So we're going to start the applause, please.